Hello, my name is Jack Mohan Chavla, and in this video, let's talk about how do you set up a project in SAP Cloud ALM. So let's get started. There are five simple steps to set up a project, and actually, some of these steps are even optional. So let's go through them one by one. The first step is template selection. When you create a project, then you can easily select from a list of possible options SAP Activate templates. And they are a fantastic jump start to your implementation because each template is preloaded with instructions that have been compiled over numbers of years and with contribution of thousands of SAP practitioners. As soon as a template is selected, a task list is created and each task has these procedures, these instructions on how to perform certain things and a lot of accelerators which are additional assets such as checklists or questionnaires that help you in your project. Also these instructions are already sequenced and come pre-distributed to roles so that saves tons of overhead for the project teams. If you're not sure of which template to select then you can actually defer this, save the project and come back to the template selection even later. If you have selected the wrong template, no problem, you can easily change the template, but yes, the tasks from the previous template will be set to obsolete. Then we come to the optional step of integration with SAP Central Business Configuration. If you have enabled this configuration, then the drop-down for integration scenario will be enabled and you can select this integration scenario. What you can do after this integration is set up is you can connect multiple projects in SAP Central Business Configuration to a single project in SAP Cloud ALM. That way, the project activities coming from SAP Central Business Configuration are replicated into SAP Cloud ALM as tasks with a dedicated source. The only thing which you need to know is those tasks are set to read only in SAP Cloud ALM because the status of those project activities can only be changed on the SAP Central Business Configuration side. Then let's talk about setting up the time boxes. So time boxes include your phases, sprints and milestones and each one has a different purpose. You get a predefined phase list from SAP Activate methodology but you can easily extend it by adding custom phase. In case your project is about a specific time frame, as an example you are only in the realize phase then you may also want to deactivate the existing phases. That can be done easily via UI option. You can also create sprints as optional and in case you do then we highly recommend that you align your sprints to the timelines of a phase. You can also create milestones and again it will be very good if you can align your milestone definitions to a phase and then later use them for a specific purpose. How time boxes are used is very simple. When you assign a task to a time box then the dates from the time box are given to the task. So which means if I assign a task to a phase, then my start date and my end date of the task are automatically taken from the phase definition. You can also set up teams. One of the team called the PMO team is created by default, but you can add more teams if you want. Teams constitute of roles and you can have person assignment to these roles. The standard role list is again coming from the SAP Activate methodology, but if you find it insufficient you can easily extend the definition by adding custom roles. The important point to note is task assignments. Tasks can be assigned to persons, roles or teams very easily and that also can be changed later. Okay so let's move ahead. The last step in a project setup is scope. So scope is something which is you can consider as a group of processes that are managed for a common purpose. Scope consists of solution scenarios and each solution scenarios can have different solution processes. But one thing you need to understand is scope is specific to a project. And the assumption is project is complete when the assigned scope is delivered. Now let's get to the system. So I'm logged on to my SAP Cloud ALM tenant and when you log on for the first time then you may also see a screen similar to this because one project is actually created for you by default you can easily go and click on this icon to change as an example the description of that project title 
you can also easily create a new one. So let's create a new one in this case. We came to this view via the project overview page, but on your Fury Launchpad, you can click on the tile called Projects and Setup and you will end up at the same place anytime. To create a new project, you can easily click on the Create option. You can click on this control to see the screen in full view. So I've given my project a title and now I can proceed by selection of an Activate Template. I can see multiple templates have been published by SAP already, so I can pick one of them as my starting point and if I am not sure then I can click on this info icon and know more about it. So in this case let's start by selecting a 3SL template. For this demo I'll skip the step for SAP Central Business Configuration and directly proceed with the time box creation. I have added the dates for the first four phases and I miss the need of a hypercare phase. So let me quickly add a custom phase. Let me save the custom phase. Now let me create a couple of sprints aligning to the realized phase. So my realized phase is from March to <coughs> April. So I'll go ahead and create a sprint. I have created two sprints and now let me save my work. Now I want to create a new team. For that I need to go to the split column layout and access the teams tab outside my project. I see my project already has a PMO team. I want to create a new team called the scrum team and I want to see if the role scrum master already exists. In this case it does not. So let me first create a role. So I've done that. Now I'll create a new team with only limited roles and this role scrum master. I can deactivate the roles which I do not need. Now I see my custom role scrum master is there so I can assign a person to this and save my team. Now let's go back to the project and now proceed to the final step which is the scope creation. I can create a scope by accessing the Manage Scopes application. So let's create a scope. You can see the system gives a list of solution scenarios and each solution scenario comes with a particular content version. So make sure you select the right one. You can select multiple solution scenarios in one scope. After creating a scope, you can easily proceed to process scoping to add processes in that scope. So let me quickly add some processes. And when I'm done, I can click on end scoping. And I see my scope has been added to my project. You can also do an extended setup of the project by adding system groups and a deployment plan to get a deployment landscape. I recommend you check out another video which is dedicated on that topic. Hope you found this video useful and thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye bye.